Okay, has this, uh, okay, there we go. Hi, everyone. Hi. Okay, now for some reason, I have lost the live on my computer. Not sure why. Um, just give me a second. There we go. Okay, we're up and running. Almost up and running. Here we go. Okay, hi, hi, everyone. Um, so fast on here today. Second, there we go. There's so much okay. delay. We're up and running. Almost up and running. Here we go. Okay, hi, hi, everyone. Uh, Okay, all right. Now, so there just seems to be a really big delay with what's going on. So let me know if you can hear me. Welcome, welcome, everyone. Natasha, Layla, Melissa, um, Tylee, Vicky, Mandy, Tanya, Clara. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So let me know if you can still hear me, hear me okay. Um, I'm really excited today because we are going to finish off what we started last week and that's all about um, the rest of awakening, um, raising your vibration and this is the Spiritual Events Awakening Your Inner Power TV and as I said we want to continue with raising your vibration. I'm Donna Ferguson, the host and the producer of the Unique Vibrations Midday Show, the producer, host and producer of the Extraordinary Women's Interview Series and host and producer of the Spiritual Events Awakening Your Inner Power Show. And um, as I said last week, we started a conversation around the daily mind battles that challenge us each and every day. Perfect. I'm glad you can all hear me. Just thought I'd better check up on that. So that's fantastic. Um, and, you know, what the morning routine consisted of. And you can do all these things in a matter of 15 minutes, which is really exciting because it doesn't actually... Um, in, intrude on your day too much so that's really really exciting and we asked um, about what you want to change in your life and what was your biggest challenge and you know please feel free to put some comments in there as we go along today I really invite you to join in this conversation it's really interesting to see where everyone's at and um, another thing we asked was all about if there was one thing that you could change to raise your vibration, make life easier for you, what would that be? And what are you currently finding as your biggest daily challenge? So I'd love to know how you feel about that, if you can write some comments in. As I said, I'm really excited to be part of the Spiritual Events Directory. And I know that if you're running a business and you want to be part of this group, that Sarah is an amazing person, very easy to work with and really very easy to get along with. And I'm sure that she'd be more than happy to find a spot for you to join us. It's really a great opportunity for your business. So like I said, um, you know, I'm excited to be here. Today, we're going to be looking at how to become more consciously aware um, as you as you awaken even further within yourself and open up that power that you hold within and keeping the flow on a conscious level and what is aligning in your emotional, physical, mental and spiritual being. You know, just taking out 10 minutes um, of complete silence a day and feeling where you sit in your vibrational energy um, and where your alignment is, is really, really important um, to be able to sort of work out what you need to do to move forward. How you felt mentally, physically, emotionally and spiritually. And as I said, today we're inviting you to the conversation on further opening up 
and raising that vibration to an even higher uh, level and starting by asking you if you have from last week, for those of you who saw last week's show, um, did you practice the 10 minutes of silence? And that includes being technology free. So no phones, no TV, no computers, no laptops, no iPads, no notebooks, whatever your technology device is that you use. Um, you know, it's really important to be free of that. So I'd really love to know exactly what and how you felt during that pro pro process and, you know, open up the conversation with some comments on how that made you feel. So just let me go back to these comments here and see who we've got. Um, Clara, Gloria, welcome. Hello, welcome. Um, glad that you can hear me. Yes, perfect. Thank you all for letting me know. Layla, my biggest challenge is to buy a house, be happy and travel. Well, that's a really good point. And, you know, everybody's looking to be happy and, and uh, yeah, everybody I speak to, I know they just want to travel um, as many times during the course of the year as they can. So what are you putting into place to be able to achieve those things? And, of course, owning your own home, that is a huge ch challenge. And, you know, it's, it's really... Um, these days when you have so many financial obligations to meet and I'm assuming and it is only an assumption that you currently are renting with rent so high, um, it really is a challenge unless you've got a share house um, that you're able to do do you know live in and really take care of that so you know what are your goals what have you got in place to be able to do that to to be able to move forward into those areas of your life clara mine everyday challenge is going to work for 10 hours a, a day five days a week and feeling like i'm not getting ahead i know that feeling it's really important with raising that vibration that you do take time out of your day clara and really look after you um, and doing that morning routine is really important because without that it's really um you know well with that it that morning routine particularly sets you up for the day with your intentions on how you're going to get through that. And I guess at the end of the day, you've got that goal in place of what you really want to do once you don't have that five day a week, 10 hours a day routine that, that you have to match. So um, hi, Linda. Welcome. Thanks for stopping by. Layla missed last week's show. That's okay. The replay's on here, Layla. You can welcome to sit back and watch that in your own time. Um, Lee, grief. Yeah, grief is really hard and there's so many processes that you have to go through to come through the other side of that. So, um, you know, and, and grief is so many things. I'm assuming it's the loss of a loved one. And that is a real challenge in itself, moving through that. There are many people that I know that work in an area of being able to help you through that process. Um, there's somebody I know particularly who works with grief. And, you know, I'm more than happy to put you in touch with that person so that you can have a look at where you're at with that because it is really important to be able to process that properly and also be able to move forward with that. So, yeah, very, you know, very much um, able to help you in that area if you would like that help. So if you would like that help, just message me, private message me at the end of the show because, um, you know, Sarah gets enough uh, messages that she needs to deal with. So, you know, any messages that you want, you can meet me, Donna Ferguson, or you can come onto my Unique Vibrations page and message me through there. I'm more than happy to answer any questions that you have. Um, and this morning, beautiful best friend, oh, do you know what? Um, I have a girlfriend who's just this week also lost a very dear friend in her best friend being her pet as well. And um, she, that, she's had that dog for many, many years. So, yeah, extremely hard to, um, to 
get past that as well. So I do understand. And silence, when I say silence, it's about really tapping into your feelings and your emotions and being able to release those emotions that you're feeling through that grief. Um, you know, I'm not a grief counsellor, I'm not a counsellor of any sort and I do um, a number of things but that's not my area of expertise and, again, uh, Linda would be more than happy to help you work through that process. If you would like some help with that, let me know and um, I can certainly put you in touch with her. Um Neurological disease called CMT, which can be, uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, I was learning to embrace my condition and accept my capabilities and grateful for where I am. Um, not feel like a failure to my family and myself. You know what? Um, I would not look at that as being a failure. Things happen and I don't know much about CMT. I'm, I'm certainly uh, not overly familiar with that. What I would say is um, certainly, you know, failure is not something you are. This is something that has been out of your control that has come in. And there's many different things that can help those processes um, you know, if you would like help with anything there, I'm more than happy to put you in touch with um, some people that I know that are very clever at being able to work through those things. So, um, you know, at least manage it a little better for you on a daily basis. So really important. So, um, you know, during that whole process of having that quiet time how did you feel during that process did you feel challenged were the feelings of overwhelm was there tiredness creeping in maybe it was a feeling that something didn't quite sit right with you and you're not able to name it um, it's okay not to be able to put a name on what it is as long as you can relate to the emotion or the feeling that you've got and be able to sort of work out it will come to you in time how to do that um, so, you know, if you did watch last week's show, I'd love to know uh, how you felt about that and, and what feelings and emotions came up, what thoughts came up for you. And, you know, we'll come back and have a look at this a little bit later on. So any of the things that we've mentioned affect our vibrational energy. And it's a really quick exercise which, you know, can be mastered really quickly and some will take longer than others to be able to master that and that's perfectly okay. Everybody has their own time frame for doing things and being able to understand and master certain processes. But doing this will bring awareness to your consciousness and therefore taking that 10 minutes to sit, breathe and be conscious of your breathing is super important to bring you back to your center and really find out what is important to you. So, um, yeah, absolutely, Grace, learning to accept a different self, grieving the old you. And that's right. There's, as I said earlier, grief is so many things. It's the end of a chapter. It's the end of a, um, a job maybe that you've been doing. It's the end of a relationship. It's, you know, it, it includes so many more things than just um, the loss of somebody or an animal close to you. So, it is very hard to come back to how to accept and deal with that. And as I said, you know, I know plenty of people that work in those areas and I'm more than happy to help out wherever I can if you're up for that, um, for that assistance. So, you know, um, right at this moment, I'd really like you to close your eyes and just take a few breaths in and out, just really being able to breathe in and really um, relax and try and understand where your breath comes from. Now, I know for uh, um, Amanda and also Lee, um, this may be a challenging time. You might have some really big emotions come through. So 
only do this if you really feel comfortable to do this in your particular circumstance at the moment. But I want you to notice where that breath comes from and is it coming from right down in your diaphragm or, you know, is it coming short, shallow breaths and what are the feelings and emotions that you're getting um, through that? It's it's a process of raising, you know, this whole process helps you to raise your, your vibration as well. So just, you know, deep breath in and just let it sit for a moment before you release it and letting that go. And I really want to check um, if there's any questions or feelings that are coming up during that. Um, during the course of that so the deeper that you're able to take that breath in the more connected to your center that you might feel that you become and how does that happen well once you understand the subconsciousness of the things that you do daily like breathing sleeping walking all of them done on autopilot we have this autopilot in our system that continues to just allow us to do things without even thinking about them and you know they sync all these things together that just occur but once you can actually stop and think about those autopilot things that we do every single day then you really can become far more aware <clears throat> of where you are in this moment and throughout your whole day. And this really can be a big step in asking, you know, in asking yourself about your vibrational energy. And a couple of questions that, that are really great to ask here are, you know, how do I feel physically today? You know, do you have any aches and pains? Do you feel, um, you know, that you're understanding where those aches and pains are coming from and all those going through any sort of grief or loss at the moment certainly may find that this is quite um, high on their list at the moment and that's, that's absolutely normal that you will feel those things with that loss. Um, and... But for the others of you, it's really important to understand where they come from and how to release that. So let me know if you're feeling anything um, physically today that, that, you know, is something that you're not normally aware of now that you've taken a moment to really tap into that. And how do you feel emotionally today? Strong, sad, happy, emotional. And I'm sure that, you know, we all have days where we are feeling um, all different emotions and, and moving through that. And, you know, what are the events that have triggered those emotions? And please let me know by making some comments down below. It's really important to understand exactly where that all comes from. And how do you feel mentally today? What's happening with your intuition? What's happening with your soul? How can you improve from yesterday? You know, what can you do better today than you did yesterday? Am I focused and are your intentions strong? What am I doing, um, going to achieve today? What can I do better today to increase my success and my vibration? Are, there, are the aches and pains moving through and releasing or are they old ailments that are still there that keep coming through? Are you mentally able to understand the event triggers to release them? Let me know what you're thinking. Um, make some comments below. I'd love to know where you're up to with that. And how do you feel spiritually today as part of your spiritual journey? When you are in that silence or the meditating um, state, are you asking the question before you go into that process to allow the quietness of the mind and the meditative state to bring you the answers? You know, do you ask those questions before you do it? Let me know. Sometimes you'd be amazed at what comes out of um, a meditation through asking a question beforehand. And often the one piece of the puzzle that's missing is the ability to understand, connect and redirect those thoughts, feelings, emotions and, and spiritual self um, and find a new way to lead yourself forwards. This is 
you know, as I said, it's a piece of the puzzle that aligns all aspects of your life and will empower you to overcome the lower vibrational energy and awaken your inner power even further. It's all part of that unconscious block that's eluded you previously. And doing these processes will then permit you to raise high enough to start receiving more and start achieving your goals and aspirations and successes. After all, I mean, that's what we're really all about. We all want to move to another level. We want to take our business up a level. We want to take ourselves up a level. You can only do that when all those little ducks are lined up in a row. It's like the glass ceilings, you know, the ones that nobody really sees and, you know, you're not aware of until it becomes um, a layer that's been unpacked or layers that have been unpacked that allow you to actually see what's been hiding deep down and suppressed for your whole life. So if you've got any questions, please ask, write them in the comments. We'll come back to those shortly. The unconscious and subconscious blocks impede you from moving forward. You know, that's the invisible ceilings, the layers as they unpack. In most cases, you're not even aware, like I said, that they even exist until you start processing those layers. Alignment in all areas of your life, such as, um, you know, um, some conditioning beliefs that you have that you haven't, haven't been able to understand. Um, part of being able to decimate those limitations that you currently feel and see in your life. And these blocks are things including the people um, you're attracting, the opportunities that you don't see, your current health situation, your financial status, etc. These limitations or blocks will continue to show up somewhere in your life through your, any self-worth issues, through your bank balance, through your confidence, through wrong um, ongoing ailments or weight um, weight situations, write your comments down. Let me know what you're currently challenged with or struggling with. I'd love to know and I'd love to be able to help you further. So most of us believe that, you know, for those of you in business, I don't know how many of you are in business here. I can't see any new comments at the moment. But if you're in business for yourself, most of us actually believe that you've got to spend money to receive the results that you want. How frustrating. I know it is frustrating. I've been there. I've done it myself. Is it that you you're spending money because people have been recommended to you or people have been, um, you know, put in your path and you're spending that money and you're not getting the results. And a lot of that comes down to maybe not being clear with what you actually want um, or, uh, you know, they're very good at not, offer, not giving you clarity in what's required and those things that keep coming up that cost you extra money down the track. So it's really important that you're spending money in the right areas of your business so that it's not causing you um, more reason to be self-sabotaging in your life, including financial relationship, love um, situations, etc. So all that um, financial situation comes back to uh, being really clear when you're asking because the quality of your communication is the quality of your life and your business and it's you have to be really clear with what you're saying and what you're asking when you're asking for something you know just saying to somebody you know here pop back um get back to me next week and we'll have a chat well next week you know, when is that? Um, then you're waiting for next week for, for them to get back to you and it's not happening. Um, oh, thank you, Sharon. I know. I love it too. <laughs> um, you know, so next Tuesday by 2 o'clock, I, I would like to have your answer because that's when the cutoff time is. Put time frames on things. If people don't want you to want to work to a time frame, then they're not the people to work with anyway. So 
Um, thanks, Judy. Thank you. Thanks for joining me too. And like I said, I, you know, any comments as we're going along and any questions that we go along as we go along, I'm more than happy to answer for you. So tapping into all areas of your life with alignment, you can overcome these challenges that you have regardless of whether they are mental, physical, emotional or spiritual. By not taking enough time out of your life to be able to reconnect with yourself or ground yourself, um, connect with your inner power and stepping into your true self, then your vibrational energy will not be raised high enough to find the success that you've been looking for and align in such a manner that you're really ready to move forward. So major steps in the process of raising your vibration. And take the time to question these things. You know, where do you want to be in one, three or five years' time? Write your comments down. I'd love to hear what your vision is for yourself and your business in you know 12 months or three years or five years time and start writing in a journal you know what you want to achieve and you know start the visualization process of what you really want either um you know just a one word um just one word as it comes to mind writing that down in a journal is really important or a sentence whatever you like and i can tell you that i have my journal here my journals here so i have my journal here and i have my list on the back so i'm always looking for new ways to be able to move my business forward and that's what i do because you know it's a process that's been shown to me many times and you know it really does give me advice to you know and information to do what I want to do, it, it's, a, it's giving me a written knowledge of not only what I want now, but how far I've come in the past. So as I said, either uh, one sentence or just the words as they come to mind, you have feelings and emotions on how you're feeling, and then expand on that and start researching pictures that represent what you want and what you want to do and you know this can be the start of your vision board it's amazing how much you can actually get done capitalize on every one of the emotions and feelings that this brings you this process brings you because capitalizing on those will really raise your vibrational energy up a level or two and you'll start achieving what you truly deserve in your life and with ease so I've got a question for you to think about at the moment. Do you ever feel like something's not quite sitting right? Um, just yes or no in the comments would be great if you could let me know that. And then next question would be, are you aware of what it is, where it triggers from? Um, is it something from past experiences? Is it something that's happened to you in your childhood? Is it something that you've um, had in your teenage years or your adult years? Um, what's occurred that's creating that? And is there a time that you've actually taken um, to consciously tap into your inner self and locate the feeling or emotion? This can really raise your vibrational energy. So let's check in and see if we've got any comments or questions to see what's happening. Um, anything further there? Doesn't seem to be any more questions there. I'd love to know if you do have any, please feel free to write them in and I'll answer those as we go along. So the next step is raising your vibration in raising your vibration is being able to acknowledge you, who you are, and have you been in control of your life? Everything you do, say, think and receive is due to controlling your daily choices. How are you raising that vibrational frequency when it comes to understanding the control that you have over your life? Because at the end of the day, you are in control, in full control of your life. 
This occurs through your thought processes, which result in your behaviours, resulting in the action steps that you take, which finally result in the results that you're currently receiving. While you have some automated actions in our lives, like breathing, walking, um, etc., your thought processes and subconsciousness can be a big part of where you control your life. So take a moment to think about your beliefs, all the current patterns and behaviours that you have and, you know, probably have had over the years, you know, since, since your conditioning years. Have you ever noticed, though, that you've changed your opinions as life goes on and, you know, are you able to really sit back and think about where you're at and, you know, the more that you learn about a topic or a subject, the more that you're able to change those belief systems because at the end of the day they are somebody else's belief systems that were in, inputted into your conditioning years and you've grown up with those. But it is very easy to change those. We, You know, I, I have a program where, you know, we change your DNA conditioning and reprogram that to where and who you want to be. So what are your thoughts on that? You know, how do you feel about that? You know, the early stages of your, your life and your conditioning years, you developed patterns from those who were authority figures in your life. You know, the first seven years of your life, their opinions influence what you believe in. But we're also subjected to the lineage cords from the past and coming through into our current life, which can go back for many, many generations. These are through great-grandparents, great-great-grandparents, grandparents, siblings, etc. Your soul or self has no linear measure of time. Your body and or your identity measures the passing of the linear time by the aging of the body for, physic for physically and, you know, so that we live in a lin linear reality. So what that means is it gives us cause and effect and polarity, both excellent tools for growth and expansion of our human consciousness. When we die, our spirit leaves our soul and our soul is reclothed, reclothed in another's spirit. So this is how part of your conditioning develops, not only from your teachers in life or your parents, they're developed from the influence of the generation, generational lineage. And sometimes this results in thinking and acting in a way that you don't even realise um, what what you're saying or where it comes from or the reasons behind that particular behaviour or have you come um, or how come you even said or did something or thought something. Alternatively, you know, you might even say something and then realise you sound just like your mother, father, grandparents. I know, you know, like I do that all the time and I'm thinking, hang on a minute, no, I always said I was never going to be the same as my mother or my grandmother, um, you know, I wasn't going to fall into those patterns, but it happens. And even when you're consciously aware of that, it still sometimes slips in. So what's your def default thinking patterns? When you think of your dreams, aspirations, does your default kick in? in giving the worst case scenarios, you know, if you want to do something, it's like, oh, well, what if I fail or what if this happens or what happens there? Write your comments down and let me know if you recognise this and I'll just check and see, tune into some more um, comments here. Grace, so with chronic illness, the loss of uh, your true cognitive and physically self, the guilt of no longer feeling good enough for self, life or family, allow time for guilt-free grieving, meditate with specific thoughts like I realise guilt 
it does not serve me absolutely or I love to like myself for who I am now I asked the universe to help me in this process I recognize I need uh, rest rest and more rest in order to achieve the basics and you know what um, Grace that's absolutely true in your situation when you need to rest take the time to rest because your body is telling you what needs to be done and where you need to be in that moment so that's hugely important um, with regard to the meditation that's perfect just uh, working on those things um, you know, maybe cutting cords, maybe cutting some of those cords. There's meditations on um, cord cutting from the past. They're really great to have a look at and see if there's something that resonates there for you. And, you know, I currently have alarms in my phone, which um, if I can just pull that up, you know, I saw this from one of the other ladies who did this and, you know, my 4 a.m. alarm clock says I am abundant. That wakes me up. Um, you know, 9.46, I am wealthy. Uh, 10.47, I am trusted and a, and a client magnet. Um, 11.50, I am, a, I am a magnet for the perfect clients. At 1 o'clock. I'm earning, you know, X amount of dollars per month. Um, three o'clock, I'm at uh, 3.16, I'm happy and at peace um, every day with myself. You know, my weight process and then, you know, the last one for the day, I'm loved and trusted because self-love is a really important part of raising your vibration. Uh, self-love is also um, considered with, if you're in business and if you don't love yourself, if you're not uh, capable of showing that self-love and taking time for yourself, then what that means is that you have, um, you have situations where your frequency goes out to the universe and that's what you get back. So what you're doing by not loving yourself is actually sending out that frequency and that vibration to the universe and that's what you're receiving back so it's really really important to be able to love yourself do some mirror work you know I am I am beautiful I am loved I am at peace I am happy um, you know I am worthy I am uh, valued you know all of those things just really and say them until you really believe it. And this process can take some time, but it's really worth it. So thank you for sharing that. That's really great. Hi, Mandy. Welcome. Thanks for joining us. Um, Grace says, lineage, uh, yes, we'll meditate on the individual wound. Default always kicks in, replace immediately. Good work. Love to hear that. Definitely cord cutting from the past. And that's from the um, generational lineage as well. That's really important. Um, I love that you love that idea. Very difficult to learn how to love yourself when you've never been taught. It's all about believing that you're worth it. Um, there's some processes. Feel free to give me, um, you know, send me a message. I'm happy to help you out in that area with some tools and tricks that you can use every single day to help you along that way. You know what? Um, you're on this call for a reason and I know that Every one of you that are here, I believe in you so strongly um, today in this moment be more than you believe in yourself. And I believe in you because you are worth it. You are valued as a person. I value the fact that you're interacting here and that you're bringing that value to the call. That's amazing. So, you know, there's so many things that we can work on just by giving you the confidence to be able to build yourself back up. So that's awesome. Hey, Patricia. Hello. Welcome. Thanks for joining us. So um, just uh, we're up to that, uh, you know, what all that lineage, generational lineage brings to you and, you know, um, 
this all influences your current day results and blocks and limitations and most of all self-sabotage behaviors you know there's things that i do and i'm like hang on a minute no 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 i'm not doing that because i have so many other areas in my life that i really want to be able to um create and serve my clients with you know the utmost level of um value that self-sabotage doesn't serve me anymore but every now and again i get things that come in i've I've learned to interrupt those thoughts and stop them from moving forward and overtaking what I'm doing. And it does take time to master that. So that's really a big part as well. Sometimes those sabotage behaviours aren't even something that you'll understand until you start to raise your vibration and truly honour your, your higher self. There's a small window of opportunity available that increases your ability to change a thought which can change the actions that follow. Um, Mel Robbins on YouTube, she has a great um, video on YouTube that talks about being able to intercept those thoughts. Now, um, she's a massive um, personality in the US and honestly, she has amazing, absolutely amazing information on YouTube. So just Google her. She really is great. So um, learned beliefs, yeah, definitely. And thank you, Grace. Thank you so much. <laughs> But she's very real. She's very real. And um, she talks about that five-second window of being able to interrupt a thought. And she's very qualified. She's, you know, she's done the scientific um, testing and, and studies and so many other things that she's got behind her. So it's not just a whim. It's not just somebody thinking that these things are okay. So when you have a thought, then you have five seconds or less to make a decision to act on that thought before you actually start to talk yourself out of it. Quite funny that that occurs and that's your self-sabotage. When you tune into your vibrational energy, you can understand exactly where that thought comes from, what the trigger is, and it enables you to release it from your lower vibrational frequency as quickly as it appeared and therefore your ability to move without interruptions within five seconds works directly. It's an extremely powerful tool to have in your system strategies and processes. And since coming across that, I really do practice that as much as possible because Mel's amazing. Um, your unique and all extraordinary individual that deserves everything that you want rather than something where you have to choose, I want to have this or I want to have that you can have it all it really you really can why do you have to choose you don't um you don't have to choose you raise your vibration you get into a position where you don't have to make that choice that if you want this one and that one you take both so um Absolutely right, especially when you're around triggers. Yes, haven't mastered that yet. So isolating self at the moment. Dear, oh dear. Okay, mindfulness. Yeah, definitely about mindfulness. Um, and, you know, you will you will master that, Grace. I have no doubt about that at all. Um, once you start practising these things, you will be able to master that. As I said, feel free to send me a question, ask me a question, um, Unique Vibrations uh, Facebook page or Donna Ferguson um, on Facebook as well. So when was the last time that you felt like you really had control over your life, full control over your life? And what do you think your biggest distraction from keeping that control of your daily life and raising your vibration might be? So if you can write comments in there, that would be fantastic. We'll come back to those comments a little bit later on. And your vibrational energy also relates to everything that you take in. 
it's what you hear, what you so what you're listening to, what you're speaking, um, your boundaries, what you digest into your body, and all of these will lower your vibration immensely. So starting with what you're listening to, what is the quality of your communication to both self and from others? And if your self-communication is of low quality, then that's what you're going to receive back um, from people around you. It's what you allow to yourself, so it's what you're allowing back into your um, boundaries. So your own self-talk, what you continually say to yourself is a mirror image of what you allow in. So all those things when you do something and you start telling yourself off, um, you know, there's other ways to actually get around that and move around that. During your childhood, Oh, ch bleh, sorry, during your childhood, what was the language like in your home? You know, are there some triggers from that conditioning that set off a sense of um, self-worth or lack of? Uh, you know, write some comments and then we'll come back to those shortly. And to create change, you must start with the person, to be the person that you want to attract into your life um, by behaving like them in your communication styles um, with yourself first. In order to raise your vibration, you must first change. So the way you talk to yourself, the way you look at yourself, the way that you communicate with yourself, the way that you love yourself, the way you value yourself, all of these things, the way you believe in yourself, really important steps. For example, to shift a block that stops you producing more income or from flowing easily and effortlessly by attracting your ideal clients, you must first allow the flow by opening up to receive and serve your clients rather than to make it about making the money from your ideal client. Serving your clients is all about sharing the gift that we have with them to enhance their life. Receiving payment in, um, in return for that is merely a reward of what you do and what you love doing. Again, this is about your language, both verbally and your body language that you set out. Um, send out into that frequency and bad language um, you know swearing can have a great effect in lowering your vibration as well so you can make this better and more productive by using better language what you digest into your body also affects your vibration your food intake like eating a lot of highly processed foods um, a lot of junk food high carbs um, that can not only uh, lower your vibration, but it can cause these aches and pains in your body. Makes you feel lethargic, gives you a fuzzy mind, um, less than creative, and provides you with that afternoon slump. Look, how many times do you hear people say, it's like three o'clock, I need my chocolate. You know, that chocolate really does not, that hit of sugar does not help. All it does is, in, you know, it doesn't increase your productivity. It spikes your insulin so that it can fall flat again. And how many times do you hear people saying, oh, that wasn't enough, I need another piece. And that becomes a habit. It's very addictive, sugar. And so it's only spiking your insulin and falling again quickly. And so it's really not helping you at all. All of this affects you in ways that some of you probably wouldn't even have realised. Eating a healthy diet will increase energy. Choosing foods that are substantial allows your body to provide um, a longer lasting satisfaction with your appetite and your body will feel effectively refueled, providing you with the benefits long term. So um, write some comments in, let me know what you think about that and we're going to look at some more information. Uh, we are coming up to one o'clock very shortly so um, I would love to know what your comments are now so we can get through those before we finalise. Um, okay, uh, Patricia, I asked, a, 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 sorry, Archangel Nathaniel to remove all negative and I'm, 
Uh, I am doing the five second thing at the moment. Fabulous. I love hearing that. That's great. Um, Grace, never. Due to needing to be light, result of surrounded by narcissism, imperating childhood, dragged into adulthood by an unaware self. Yeah. Yeah. And look, Grace, you're working on a lot of things and, you know, I totally understand that it is a process and it all takes time. Um, so, yeah, um, it will take time. It takes time to move through that. Like I said, I'm here to help. If you need anything, you know, we can do a power call, just works. I can give you some tools and tr uh, tricks and tools if you want them. You've got to ask for that assistance though. Um, Mandy, I've been making conscious effort to eliminate negative self-talk for about a year now and it has been a massive difference in my life. Absolutely, totally agree with you, Mandy. It's the smallest of things that can truly make a big difference in your life. Things like saying but, just and just are two things that I really do try not to um, uh, put through in my vocabulary. And every now and again, if I'm really tired or I've had, you know, um, there's some other stuff going on, you know, they creep in. And sometimes it's because... Others um, can only relate to that language and I just don't like using it. I, I simply don't like using it. Every time I do, I'm like, yeah. Um, other people really don't understand. So that's what they relate to. Sometimes you use that language so that you're relating to them as a um, coach and client and it's important to have that same level to be able to bring them up to the level that they want to go to so you know a number of different reasons why sometimes that does come into my vocabulary but yes I am but there we go because I'm talking about it and really it is uh, it does make a big big difference like love and forgive yourself totally totally um, huge huge uh, ways of increasing your own self-worth. Patricia, I also communicate positive to myself, like I am worthy, beautiful, compassionate, amazing mum and friend, etc. I also, every time I wash my hands, I say that's what a wealthy, that's, that's what a wealthy looks like. That's what a, an abundant woman looks like and that's what a rich woman. I hope you're saying that in the mirror because that's awesome. I love that. Well done. Um, that's what a wealthy man. <laughs> that's awesome. I love that. I really do love that. I think it's amazing that you're standing there and doing that. And these things all contribute to raising your vibration. You know, things like also drinking alcohol, for example, um, lowers your vibration, dehydrates you. So the next day it's, it's really taking longer to hydrate your system and possibly causing effects on your organs as well. Well, we know it, it does. And staying hydrated and drinking plenty of water each day also facilitates the flushing of to toxins. And it's really important to... Um, make sure that when you have drunk alcohol that you are take, taking in a lot more water a lot sooner because there's so many toxins that come with that. Toxicity has a marked impact on your vibration and finding the ways known for reducing that is really important. Next, we're going to have a quick look at your boundaries and what they are for you. So what is your personal space and how do you tune in to others when talking about them? So um, any comments would be great. Oh, fantastic. I'm glad to hear that you're doing that in front of the mirror. That's awesome. Great exercise to determine, to determine your boundaries is to stand up and spread your arms out in front of you. And you can do this. Um, you can do this now if you like, just to get a feel of that. So feel your energy space. When you put your arms out in front of you, what are you looking for? You know, are you comfortable for people to be that far away or that far away? You know, when you go somewhere and somebody comes and stands right in front of you, I'm always backtracking. I, I like my space to be this far. 
it's really important to me not to have my um, energy invaded because we all know there's other entities out there that really do start attaching themselves if you're not protected and if you're not actually being able to set your boundaries and being really clear about them. So it's really important. Um, drink more water, yeah. And I think this is a time of the year where we tend to not drink as much as what we normally would. It's cooler so we don't feel like we're as thirsty. It's still your body needing that amount of water to actually uh, be able to operate fluently. So, um, you know, how do you feel about your arms being stretched out before you lose that? Um, what you feel is effectively your personal space and boundaries. Take a note of this so that next time you're in a crowded room, a mental note, um, come back to this and feel your space and feel how comfortable you feel. And just, you know, if you have to spread your arms out a little bit to talk so that people don't come in and intrude in your space, that's absolutely fine. If you're already familiar with your own personal space and boundaries, do you speak up if somebody's crowding your space and crossing your boundaries? Really interested to hear how that goes. Notice how you feel when you're talking to somebody. You know, this is a great way to understand if they're encroaching on your personal space. Be organised so the energy that you walk into a room with we all know that everything's energy and our energy actually precedes um, our, our soul, our spirit, our, our body when we get there. So when, you're, uh, when you walk into a room, um, you want your energy to be settled. So are you organising yourself so that you actually are in a good state when you get to any of your meetings? Um, and walk into a room, you know, walking into the room with, with being settled and very, very powerful. So everyone in the room wants to get to know you. They all want to come and talk to you. And this comes from time management, organisational skills to avoid rushing prior to attending any meetings that you're going to. Surround yourself with those who already... Um, are uh, in this high vibrational space. Who in your circles is sending out high vibrational energy and make contact with them, have a conversation with them. Ask them to share what they do to get to know them on a deeper level, but also so that you can um, mirror image them and, and become that high vibrational frequency that people want to be around. It's a competition. It's not a competition. So leave comparative nidus out of your world. It's really not worth. Um, it's not worth having that with you and carrying that with you. Lowers your vibration. Stops you from excelling to another area. Letting go of this aspect allows more fly, flow and raises your vibration. Get out of your comfort zone. It empowers you. How do we go through personal growth if growth if we're not getting out of our comfort zone it will raise your vibrational en energy and remember women support women and women will be very welcoming into a new environment doing kind things for others and paying it forward will increase your vibration express gratitude every day allow others to uplift you and compliment you um, Learn how to receive those compliments. It will increase your confidence and, sorry, learn how to receive the compliments because it will re really increase your confidence and in turn increase your successes and raise your vibrational energy. Okay, what have we got here in our comments? Um, that's what I need to drink more water. I love that. I do that, Patricia. I started... It's a little hard at first, yes. Um, I take three big breaths, perfect. Um, I'm really good with protecting my boundaries as I do feel others' energy strongly. And it's really important for you to protect yourself, Mandy, if you are very connected to other people's energy, particularly if you're an empath. Um, boundaries affect my words. Uh, somebody's words are sarcastically hurtful, Ben and Jesto. Then just I removed myself. 
Um, I'm good walking into a room. My issues are with close family. And, you know, often it's the ones that are closest to you that create the most um, effect on our vibration. So I totally understand that. It's really challenging. Um, what you can do there, though, is I would control the amount of time that you are spending with them. So lessen the amount of time that maybe you spend with them or there are some other processes that you can do to actually change the way that you think and feel about that. And it is about managing those thoughts and feelings that you have. Whoops, that was one of my alarms going off telling me how amazing I am. Um, and, and so, yeah, that, there's some things I'm happy to have a chat. If you want to message me, let me know so we can move through that. I would love to be able to help you. Um, yeah, meetings, formal functions are easy for me. Awesome. Edit, even being in jest. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, read between errors. Absolutely. I kind of got that. Um, adult children. Yeah, adult children are a real challenge. Um, they're, particularly if they're sort of late teens to early early 20s, they have hormones running everywhere and they just, you know, know it all and expect the world owes them, uh, you know, something. It's how you manage that again. It's about thinking and managing how you think and feel about that. So really important. I hope this is really resonating with you guys and, you know, what you're doing on a daily basis you know, if you're aware of what you're doing that interferes with your vibrational energy, if there's one thing you can name that you can change, that would be great. Um, you know, showing gratitude is really important every single day. Last question um, before we go. Um I'll just wait a moment. Adult children, yes, I've done that. Middle, yeah, middle, yeah, early 30s, yeah. E even that, you know, you expect that they possibly would have um, come down by that stage. If they haven't got children of their own, then they're possibly not going to learn that lesson as yet. What I would say is give them time when they do have children, then they will definitely start to understand that. I'm going to invite you all to join my five-day Raise Your Vibration uh, five-day challenge where you'll become a lifetime member of our closed Facebook group. Um, when you register for the challenge, I'm going to pop the link in right here. I'm also offering Awaken Your Inner Power four week coaching um, that will provide you with heaps of bonuses learn how to empower your presence through gratitude raising your vibrational frequency and increasing your awareness of high energy um, vibrational attraction and again there is a link there Okay, feel free to um, ask me, private message me on that page. I'm more than happy to help you all out. And remember that every single day that you were born, you were born to actually be extraordinary. So don't let others and allow others to let you settle for ordinary because you deserve so much more than that. Okay, what have we got? Yep here got it excellent 
And Mandy, I make a point of telling people how grateful I am for them ever since I came away from, oh, yeah, yeah, domestic violence, yeah. I can relate to that. I've been there as well many, many years ago. Um, I did have my beautiful daughter as a result of that relationship. It is, you know, without that, I'm really grateful for that because without that, I wouldn't have um, my daughter and... So I can thank, honestly thank him for that. And, um, you know, there's so many things. I wouldn't have learned to grow into the person I am today without it. So many things that you're grateful for, even um, bad situations that create so much more. So bless everybody. Thank you so much for being here. I'm really very grateful for that. And I look forward to seeing you all very very soon so let's uh, finalize this now and be more grateful grace because you want to be not because you feel that you need to be it's all about you know wanting what you want so bear that in mind um okay let me see if okay here we go i'm off until next week 12 o'clock I'll be here with um, another episode of the Awakening Your Inner Power TV. See you all then. Have an extraordinary week.